Yay. So thank you guys for being here. Um, this is super exciting. And seriously, such a small intimate group and the people online. Um, if you have a question while I'm talking, just ask it. Um, so we are going to do a deep dive on gut health. Hippocrates, 2,500 years ago, said all illness starts in the gut. And we now know with actual research, that's the wrong clicker. There we go. Um, we now know with actual research that that's true, that all illness really does start in the gut. Um, and I know someone last week, you said, mentioned gut health. Yeah. Yes, super cool. So we're going to take that and we're going to dive even deeper, which is awesome. And people online, I can hear you. So if you have a question, please feel free to just unmute and ask, and then I'll repeat it to the group out here, which is great. Um, cool. Okay, so here's our goal today. Um, by the end of this presentation, so the next 20, 30 minutes, I'm hoping that you have a deeper understanding of how your gut functions and how your gut function relates to your overall health. Um, I want you to have an understanding of functional nutrition and how nutrition is important for more than just building muscle mass or losing fat. Um, and then go home with a couple action steps for your own well being. So, what you wanna do and what you wanna take away from this. Fun fact, just to start this off, do you guys know why the Dead Sea is the Dead Sea? Totally unrelated to gut health, but important for life. It's the salt content, but why does it have so much salt? Quiz. Anybody know? Because the salt, uh, I think it, doesn't it like draw out all of the fluids and the nutrients that you actually need for good, good life and growth? Yep, so someone online said, isn't it because the salt draws out all the nutrients? That is true, but that is not why it happens. The Dead Sea is the Dead Sea because it has an input, but it doesn't have any output. So the Dead Sea just stops and that's why it is so salty because it doesn't have any flow out. So I always like to start talks saying, let's not be the Dead Sea. So we have so much input in our lives. We have social media and email and blogs and all of the stuff. Um, so I want to put you in a position to listen, to have some sort of output. So whether that's like, you're gonna go home and drink kefir once a day, which I'll get to, think, listen from a perspective of having an output. So you took the time to come here. Don't be the Dead Sea. Okay, cool. Um, so who am I? Why am I here? Um, I'm the owner and founder of Live Nourished. If you want a t-shirt, we have them. Um, what is Live Nourished? So this is kind of the definition of what it is to be Live Nourished. And this is so what Sandy Griffin does, which is just such a beautiful connection. Um, Living Nourished is about so much more than just exercise and nutrition. It's about mindset, lifestyle, feeling confident in your own skin, loving who you are by nourishing your mind, body, and spirit. It's about healing. It's about growing. It's about finding your value, your meaning, and your purpose. It's about feeling whole and healthy from the inside out. And you deserve that kind of whole body health. And so that's where Live Nourished has grown from. Um, and then just a little bit about me, who am I? So I started as a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer, loved it, and then got totally sucked into nutrition. And that's what I do full time now. Um, so went back to school to the Institute for Functional Medicine, um, got a degree in functional medicine nutrition. I'm now a board certified health coach, which I just like to highlight that one because the health coaching industry has a tendency to be kind of unregulated. Um, and there's a lot of people who are like, I eat vegetables, therefore I'm a health coach. And no, that's not true. Um, they need to have some sort of like information body governing them something. Um, so that's a pretty cool one, board certified. Um, I am Fox 21 Living Locals health and wellness expert, kind of fun fact. Um, so if you're ever on TV once a month at 9 a.m., I'm there. Um, I was recognized as a continental who's who women or trustworthy woman of influence, which was a super huge honor. Um, and then for eWomen Network, which is a, a network of women entrepreneurs, I'm one of their premier success coaches and I'm the only one in the health and nutrition space. They're all other business coaches. And they brought me in because they recognized how important it is to be well as a business owner. So that's who I am. That's why I'm here talking to you. Enough about me. Um, this is where I always like to start presentations and what I hope you get out of this. Well-being is not just an absence of illness. It's a complex combination of physical, mental, and emotional elements that work together to create whole healthy people. The specific combination that makes you well is unique to you. To find it, you need a coach who understands this and who will take the time to listen to you and work alongside you to help you find the right combination of factors that will nourish you. So important, like you guys being part of this challenge and working with Sandy, I just wanna give you props for showing up and understanding that working with someone is really helpful. Um, and then the concept that well-being well is this complex 
integration of all of these pieces of nutrition and movement and mindfulness, um, chemical balances, all of that. Okay, so here we go. I think a lot of times we think about nutrition solely in this context. Um, it's either gonna help me gain muscle or lose weight. And that's what I think 90% of people when they start thinking about nutrition think of. Like, well, it's either gonna make me fat or it's gonna make me skinny or it's gonna make me jacked. That's what we think about. So I wanna give you a little bit bigger picture of what nutrition does. This is our functional medicine pyramid of health and well-being. So in order to be healthy up here, the bottom of that pyramid is digestion and nutrition. So what you are putting in your body is the number one most important thing that you can do any day. Think about if you put diesel in a gas car, not going to work. It'll work for a little bit and then it'll totally bog down the car and the car is going to die or vice versa. Put gas in a diesel car, it'll blow up the engine. It'll work for a while um, and then it'll totally break it. So if you do nothing other than fuel yourself well, you have at least the bottom of the pyramid well. And then we start moving into all of these other pieces, how well your body detoxifies. We're exposed to toxins every day, just even today, like breathing the air. <laughs> um, we're exposed to toxins. So we can't avoid toxins, but your body's designed to detox. So how well does your body do that? Your blood sugar or your insulin? Um, are you insulin resistant because of what you eat? How well does your body navigate those fluctuations? Stress and inflammation, huge. How well does your body navigate stress? How easily can you go from fight or flight to rest and digest? And how often are you in rest and digest? These days we are in fight or flight so often. Our bodies don't know the difference between you know, the stress of checking our email and the stress of running away from a saber tooth tiger. They're the same biologically. Um, and just because of today's stressors, we're running away from a saber tooth tiger, you know, nine out of 24 hours a day sometimes more. Um, then we have immune system. Notice immune system is stacked on all of these other basics. Um, if you have these other basics and you're functioning well, your immune system is going to be well. Then we have thyroid. I think this is a big one, especially in a fitness challenge. So often people are told if they have thyroid dysfunction, they're not going to be able to lose weight. And that's actually not true because if we can get the base of the pyramid functioning right, we can get this balanced out pretty well, whether you're on thyroid medicine or not. Um, then we have hormones, brain function, heart function, and genes. I love that this is at the top. Your genes do affect you. Like we're born with genes, they matter, but look how teeny tiny they are. I mean, it's just, it's so minimal. Um, it's important and it matters, but it's so minimal. So this is really truly what food is doing. This is a piece, but this is really what's happening. Um, and then we talk about gut function, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, what you put in your gut is either going to help your body function well or have your body function complete, sorry, body function well or have your body function really poorly. So that's what we're going to dive into today. Um, okay, a, function, a couple of fun functional medicine facts to start. So all disease starts in the gut. That's Hippocrates. Here's our proof that we are now learning. 95% um, of the serotonin in our bodies is created in our gut the study that's happening right now. So cool. Um, I think this is really important because what it tells us is that depression and anxiety are not a brain problem. They're a gut problem. Um, depression and anxiety, you know, are also related to trauma and past history and all these other pieces. And if 95% of our serotonin, the hormone that makes us happy or depressed, if that's created in our gut, what on earth are we doing using brain drugs to fix that? Um, so that's pretty huge. Another piece of this is serotonin is the precursor for melatonin. So when we talk about insomnia or issues sleeping, um, if we don't have enough serotonin being created, we're also not going to have enough melatonin being created. And now we're going to have sleep issues, which then is going to harm our serotonin issues, which is going to put us more into anxiety and depression. And here's this ugly cycle. Um, so that's pretty huge. Gut permeability and gut inflammation are the leading causes of the leading triggers of both chronic illness and autoimmune disease, um, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, heart disease, cancer, acne, psoriasis, eczema, we can link all of those back to gut permeability and chronic inflammation. Um, and we can often reverse or prevent those just by healing your gut, which is pretty wild. Um, your gut microbiome is as unique as your fingerprint. I think that's so cool. Sorry, people in my house, probably really loud. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, so this means a couple of things. One, put this in your brain. We are 100 billion human cells that make up who we are. We are 700 trillion bacteria cells. Yeah. So we're like 
really just a host to a whole bunch of other stuff. So when we think about fixing our bodies or healing our bodies, you know, trying to fix or heal our bodies by dealing with the human cells, we're dealing with what one eighth of the situation that's happening versus when we try to fix or heal ourselves by fixing or healing our bacteria, we're dealing with a way larger proportion. Um, the other thing that that means is, you know, diet, what you put in your body is going to be different based on who you are. Keto might be the absolute best thing for your sister-in-law and the absolute worst thing for you. Um, and the way we determine that is how your body processes food and what your body needs. And that changes. Like when we go through menopause, that changes. Um, when we get older, that changes. When we are trying to heal something specifically, that changes. So diet is not a one size fits all. And if we're talking about 700 trillion bacteria cells, that's a pretty large variety of things that are going to be very different from me to you. So that's pretty important. Um, and then 70% of your immune system is housed in your gut. So your uh, white blood cells, the cells that go around and eat all of the junk that attack viruses that come in, those are housed in your gut lining. It's called your gut associated lymphoid tissue or GALT for short. Um, so same thing, if we're talking about immune system way up here, right? What affects the immune system, digestion and gut health, which is way down here. Um, so oftentimes when people get sick a lot, they'll start taking elderberry syrup and all these things to boost their immune system, but we're still missing that bottom piece of the pyramid, which is your gut health. Yeah. Good question. All of the above. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. The question was when we're talking about gut, are we talking about stomach, small intestine, large intestine, or all of the above? The answer is all of the above. Um, a lot of times we'll focus on the large intestine because that's where the majority of our bacteria live, but the enzymes that are produced in our stomach are a super important piece of that. The um, little cilia, these little guys that live in our small intestine, super important piece of that. And then the bacteria and the microbiome that are in our large intestine, super important piece. So great question, all of the above. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is one of our actual clients who had severe psoriasis and eczema <laughs> all over her body. Um, had been to a bunch of different dermatologists, couldn't get it sorted out or would, she'd put cream on it, it would go away and then it would immediately come back. We did a gut healing protocol with her, nothing else, nine weeks later, that's what it looks like. Pretty cool. Um, and all we did was heal her gut. We didn't do anything else. So I just think that's a really amazing visual picture. So let's talk about how do you know if you have underlying gut issues? This is what we call our medical symptoms questionnaire, our MSQ. This is what we use in functional medicine. And all of these symptoms, I'm going to take you through a handful of slides. If you have three or more in any one category or a score of 25 plus, um, we can probably heal something. Yeah, go do you think we can probably heal that with gut health. So I just want you to take a second, count on your fingers where you're at. Um, and you can think about, you know, severity. So if you get headaches every single day, that's going to be a four, not a three. Um, so just do some quick math in your head, headaches, faintness, dizziness, insomnia, watery, itchy eyes, allergies are huge with gut health, swollen, um, or sticky eyelids. If you get rashes on your eyelids, that's a big sign, dark circles under your eyes that have no relation to how much you sleep, um, blurred vision, itchy ears, ear infections. If you get a ton of earwax in your ear, that's a sign that your microbiome is off, um, ringing in your ears, hearing loss. Give you a second calculate that in your head. It doesn't have to be accurate, but try to get close. Stuffy nose, sinus problems, hay fever, sneezing attacks, excessive mucus formation. If you're always like, eh, eh, that's a big one. Um, or if you get post-nasal drip a lot, that's a huge one. Chronic coughing, gagging, clearing your throat, <laughs> sore throat, hoarseness, loss of voice, um, swollen or discolored tongues. If you get canker sores often, that's a huge sign of gut dysfunction. Acne, hives, rashes, hair loss, flushing or hot flashes, excessive sweating. Acne is a fun one. There's three different types of acne. There's just acne from clogged pores because you're not washing your face. So we call that hygienic acne. There's hormonal acne, which is a thing. When your hormones get off, you get acne. But then there's also what we call toxic acne. Your skin is the biggest cell or the biggest organ in your body. So it's the fastest way for your immune system to get toxins out of your body. The only other way it can get out is through your you know, excretion pathways. Um, and that just takes a little bit of extra time. So the, the toxins are going to be in your body longer versus your little immune system gets the thing and it goes whoop, straight out. Um, that's called toxic acne. It's your body trying to get rid of 
toxins, bacteria, stuff that's wrong. Um, okay, chest congestion, congestion, asthma, bronchitis, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing. This is one of my favorites. We're gonna talk about kefir later. Um, but I worked with a doctor from Russia, super cool lady who worked in the tuberculosis clinics in Russia back when TB was huge in Russia, super old, super wise, amazing woman. Um, they didn't wear masks, they didn't wear gloves, they didn't do anything. They were given kefir and caviar specifically to help improve the their intestinal lining and not a single one of their doctors got TB working in an active TB clinic. Pretty crazy. Um, so then we, you know, add COVID in, that's a long yeah. thing. We have healthy guts, we're in better shape. Not that you won't get it, but better shape. Um, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, kind of the obvious ones. Like I have gut cramps, I feel it down here. Those are obvious gut dysfunction. Um, joint muscle pain, arthritis, stiffness, uh, limitation of movement, pain or aches and muscles, feeling weakness. Obviously, if you do a hard workout and then you're sore, that's just a hard workout. But if you have, yeah. <laughs> But if, but if you have like chronic achy joints, you just get up in the morning and you're like, oh, you just don't feel good. That's chronic inflammation. Your joints are manifesting that and that comes from your gut. Um, and then this one is huge, the cravings one. If we're more bacteria than we are human, it's our bacteria that are in charge of our cravings. So when you have those sugar cravings and you just can't function without sugar, that's not actually your willpower. That's the little bacteria bugs going, it's dinner time and you're going to feed me now. Um, so that's a huge one. I think that's helpful when people are trying to break cravings, especially on a challenge or a fitness plan. Um, cause sometimes just having that in my head, like, oh, my bacteria is just complaining. I'm not going to eat that. I'm fine. Sometimes that mindset's helpful. Um, last one, fatigue, sluggishness, apathy, less lethargy, hyperactivity. So the opposite end of that or restlessness, poor memory, confusion, brain function, the brain gut axis is huge. Um, I actually just learned this yesterday and I think it's so cool when a fetus is forming and all the cells are splitting apart, the gut and the brain come from the same branch off of cells. I mean, obviously it all comes from the same two cells, but then it starts breaking into these other two things and the gut and the brain are the two that are formed from the same axis, which is pretty wild. Um, mood swings, fear, anxiety, nervousness, anger, irritability, aggressiveness, depression. We now have research that can link, um, schizophrenia to poor gut health and can also link, um, oh no, schizophrenia, what's another really gnarly? Yeah, thank you, bipolar to poor gut health. We can link those directly. And when we start healing someone's gut, they'll often start having a decrease of symptoms, which is pretty wild. Um, frequency of illness, urgent irritation, genital itch or discharge. This one's huge. Oftentimes we'll have someone with a candida overgrowth. Candida is a yeast that lives in all of us. Um, and sometimes it gets out of balance. So I had a client a while ago who checked that off and I was like, how long have you been itchy? She's like 13 years. And I was like, oh, that sounds horrible. Um, and so we put her on a candida cleanse. We got her gut figured out and now she's back eating normally. And she's like, I don't itch and it's amazing. Like, can you imagine being itchy for 13 years? Oh, I get itchy for a day and I'm like done with it. Okay. So yeah, do it. Yes, super well said. Yeah, so for those of you online, what Sandy just highlighted is um, this is a short-term thing, not a life death sentence. So we do this healing protocol, we get your body back to where it is, and then you can go back to, to normal life. Um, it's sort of like, this is my favorite analogy for gut health. If you have a broken arm, what do you do? Yes. Yeah, you put in a cast for how long? Six weeks, and then it's fixed, right? Same thing with your gut. Like, if your gut is broken, we can't put it in a cast because you have to keep eating um, or you die. But we can do some things to, to help. Re yeah, or you die. Um, but we can do some things to, to basically put a Band-Aid over the part that's damaged so that it can heal. We can remove all of the things that are causing issues. And then once it's healed, then you can go back to throwing a baseball and doing push-ups and all the things. So yeah, exactly. Um, one of my other favorite analogies, if we think about, you know, like the car with the gas and the diesel, and we, we put the wrong fuel in the wrong engine and it blows up the engine that happens with humans. Like we put the wrong fuel in the engine and we break the engine. But what's cool about humans is we can heal. Like we are designed 
to heal ourselves. And the magic about all of this, and what I think is so cool being in this position is like, I can walk someone through the protocol of how to do it. I'm not healing anybody. Like their body is healing themselves. We're just putting the right building blocks in place and taking out the stuff that's hurting. Um, and then their body's healed and we're like, cool, great. Off with your life. Yeah, well said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good question. So the question for those of you who are online are people who have like the gastric bypass surgery or they take out a piece of their gut, are those people screwed for life or will they heal? Um, <laughs> my answer for you is the same as dinner, both. Um, <laughs> yeah, both. People, <laughs> yeah. yes and no. Um, totally, it depends, it depends. Um, people who have gastric bypass surgery or a piece of their colon resected, resected because of diverticulitis or something like that, um, they are losing a portion of their absorption pathway, basically. So they're losing the ability, so if your you know, intestine is ceiling to floor times eight long, and your intestine's job is to pull all of the nutrients that your body needs out of the food, now you've just shortened that pathway. So with people who have that surgery, you have to be really conscious about making sure that you're getting enough nutrients. And oftentimes that means supplementing because if we weren't getting it out of our food before, now we have less surface area to get it out of before. Um, and then same thing with people who have, you know, like a stomach staple or a um, gastric bypass or a gastric sleeve. Thank you. Um, we're shrinking the size of their stomach, which means they are getting less food which helps them lose weight, but it also means they're getting less nutrients. So we have to think about for that is we have to make that food significantly more nutrient dense than it was before. We have to be even more conscious about making sure that everything we're putting in our body is gonna get us the nutrients that we need. Cause we used to be able to get all of that nutrients out of this much. Now we can get all that nutrients out of this much. We have to have this be more nutrient dense. Does that make sense? Yeah, great question. Okay, so, um, we're going to talk about how all of these things are related to gut health. So here's kind of an animated picture of your gut. A um, couple of crazy facts about your large intestine. So stomach, small intestine, large intestine. This is your large intestine. Um, your large intestine is one cell thick. Crazy. Um, there is a reason why that is, but we probably won't get into that tonight. But if you think about the thinnest part of your skin, so think about, you know, that those really tender parts. The thinnest part of your skin is 30 cells thick. So if you think about this being 30 cells thick, the lining of your gut, so that's the thing that keeps all of the bacteria that is in your gut in your gut, keeps all of your fecal matter in your gut and not leaking out into your body. Gross. Like, would you eat someone's poop? No, but your own poop is like floating around in your body if you have leaky gut. Um, super gross. And all of your food particles, you have a one cell thick barrier. <laughs> Success. <laughs> um, you have a one cell thick lining keeping all of that stuff in your gut. And I actually got asked last night why it's one cell thick because one of my jokes is like, who knows why the Lord made it that way? There is actually a reason. Um, a lot of your immune system lives out here outside your gut. And in order for immune, your immune system to be able to do its job and make sure that there's not pathogens, your immune system has to be able to sample what's in your gut, basically peer in to what's in your intestine. Um, without having to break that barrier. So that's why it's so thin, fun fact. Um, so we can see that if we have issues, if we have gaps between those cells and we've got stuff leaking out, which is not hard to do, now what happens is your immune system, which lives out here, goes wah, 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 five alarm fire. There's fecal matter floating around in my human and I have to go attack it. Or there's food particles leaking out of my human. I have to go make sure that that doesn't cause issues. So your immune system, which is an inflammatory response, it's a good inflammatory response, but it is, it creates inflammation to send out that alarm to have everything come. Um, your immune system comes and it attacks whatever that thing is. So if you think about how many times do you eat a day, three, five, six, drinking diet, something in between drinking wine, drinking Gatorade, every single time you're putting something into your body, if you have gut permeability already, every single time you're putting something into your body, you're having an immune response. Ooh, that's bad. 
So what happens when you have an immune response? You get a runny nose, you get a headache, you feel tired, you have achy joints, you have achy muscles, you don't wanna do things. Um, all of these things that we associate with the flu are happening every single time you eat. And then we can link this to autoimmune disease. Um, if you guys are into philosophy at all, I think it's, I think it's Locke or Nietzsche. If you guys are in philosophy, correct me. But you know, when you have an army and you have a really big built up army that's like ready to go fight and they don't have anything to go fight, they're gonna go find something to go fight. Your immune system is exactly the same. So if your immune system is on high alert 18 times a day, it's gonna go fight something that it's not meant to fight, AKA your brain, Alzheimer's, AKA your joints, rheumatoid arthritis. Like it's gonna go find something to fight. And then there's this whole other category, which we won't get into tonight of molecular mimicry and all of these things. Um, but that's what's happening. Okay, so how do you get these gaps between your cells and your gut? So in between these cells, these little triple things, those are called tight gap junction proteins. They're the proteins that hold your cells together. And they're the proteins that are designed to, if something is wrong in your gut, let your immune system into your gut to go, whoop, coming in, immune system can come in, fix stuff, come back out. Okay, if these guys are triggered all the time and are pulled apart, but what triggers them is an uh, enzyme called zonulin. Zonulin is triggered when there is inflammation. Inflammation is triggered by things like fake sugar, by things like um, gluten is like a whole nother category. I could talk for another whole hour on gluten, but um, basically food that your body doesn't recognize as food that triggers inflammation. So your body goes, whoop, let's let that apart. But then because that inflammation never goes away, those that gut cell never comes back together. So now we have stuff coming in and out. We have your immune system fighting all the time and we have a whole range of symptoms and it's a whole mess. And then what happens is because things are coming in and out to something that should be super smooth, now we start getting tissue damage. So now we have inflammation because now your body's trying to fix this and fix this. And we just have a whole soup of a hot mess. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the function of what's happening when we have leaky gut. Um, I read a study a couple weeks ago that says 80% of Americans have some sort of gut dysbiosis or leaky gut. We call it gut permeability just because of what we eat. Um, to give you a 10 second thing on gluten, I don't think gluten's bad. What's happened in the United States with both genetic modification and just straight crossbreeding to make wheat last longer on shelves, we have a food that is designed to last longer on shelves, not be digested. So if we compare the molecular structure of wheat in Europe to wheat in the United States, it's not actually the same food, which is pretty crazy. Um, the other thing that's, that's causing this to happen like crazy is the introduction of fake sugars. So chemical sugars, the introduction of non-food supplements. So you go to Kroger, you buy the Kroger brand of supplements, you've got vitamin C and vitamin A and all these things, but they're lab created, not food created. What happens when you put something in your body that's not a food, so the reason that fake sugar doesn't have any calories in it is because your body recognizes it as a foreign invader, not a food. So when you put something in your body that's a foreign invader, all of this happens. Your immune system goes, must fight, and it goes and fights, and then we have inflammation and leaky gut and the whole thing. So I always tell my clients, like, if you're going to drink a Coke, please just go get the old school Coke in a bottle with sugar. And like sugar has its own issues, but it's way better than something that your body is going to recognize as a virus. Like, would you ever go drink a cup of a virus? No, but if you're drinking sweet and low and Splenda and all of those things, you might as well be drinking a virus because your body's responding to it the same way. So any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. That's a really good question. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I'll repeat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. I knew that 
and we have a sign that should have been called Men's in the Park on Broadway and that was going to be over to that part of that was next week. Yep. Um, the big sugar, I knew that was great. Yep. But, and I know there's studies that it's kind of 50 50 and it's like it's, it's independent of your body. Mm -hmm. so Yeah. Um, that was better, a better choice for me than the sugar. Mm -hmm. So you discussed that balance of fake sugar and real <laughs> sugar and diabetes and gut health. You kind of come to help people find that understanding of their nutrition. Yeah, that's a brilliant question. So for those of you who are online, <laughs> I wish you had heard that whole thing because that was brilliant. But basically, the cliff notes are the question is what do you do if you're, you know, type 2 diabetic or pre diabetic? And sugar really does create a very dangerous insulin response. And it's going to push you into something that's deadly. Let's just be honest. Um, versus, you know, gut health and fake sugar and all of that. So how do we balance that? So here's, this is how I would answer that is we work with humans. Um, and so there's, you know, there's, there's science and there's what's really happening, but then we're also working with humans. So in that case, what's the more dangerous thing? The more dangerous thing is being type two diabetic and not being able to lose that weight. So what do we do? If you go into a hospital, you triage. So step one is like, let's just get you back to an insulin level. That's like safe for you. Yeah. Like let's do that first. And then if you have some of these other things going on, then let's heal your gut. And then let's talk about this in stage two, um, for someone who's dealing with you know, like anxiety, depression, or schizophrenia or something, this is absolutely where we would go first. Um, so I think that's super important, especially when we talk about any kind of nutrition or lifestyle change, we're humans um, and we have to treat ourselves like humans. And so, um, you know, if you set off sailing from the United States in one direction and you make a two degree shift and you keep going in that direction, you end up on a different, yeah, you end up on a different continent than you would have before. So if the first two degree shift that I can get someone to make is to take their daily grams of sugar from 110 to 30, like let's start there. Um, I think a lot of times, especially with functional medicine, people can get overwhelmed because it's so much and that's really true. So where, what we do is we say, what's that first two degree step? And then let's keep walking in that direction for a while. And then let's take another two degree step. And all of a sudden we're over here. So yeah. Yeah, great question. So um, um, coconut sugar has, still has a glycemic index, but it's way lower, way better. Um, agave is one that gets a really good rap, but it actually has a higher glycemic index than normal sugar. So I wish agave hadn't gotten popular because it's like horrible. <clears throat> um, so coconut sugar is fantastic. Raw unfiltered honey is really good in small doses. If you get the filtered processed honey, it has a significantly higher glycemic index. So raw, unfiltered honey also has a bunch of good gut things, helps with allergies. Honey is awesome. It's like antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiviral, but raw, unfiltered honey, fabulous. Um, grade B maple syrup, which they just changed it. I think right now they call it dark maple syrup, but basically same thing, like less processed, just a little drop of maple syrup, way better than brown sugar in your oatmeal. Yeah, monk fruit is fantastic. Yeah, monk fruit's great. Stevia. Um, kind of hit or miss depending on a person's body. Some people can't do stevia at all. It like, gives them terrible gas and bloating. Sometimes stevia is fine for people. Um, stevia also has a tendency to be mixed with a whole bunch of other junk. So if you look at stevia, like flip it around and read the ingredients, but that one's an okay one. Yeah, um, and all of those are actual foods. So your body doesn't freak out because it knows there's like zinc and selenium and things that your body can do with that. Yeah, yeah, totally, great question. Keep asking those questions. Okay, so does this make sense? How all of these things can be caused by this? Okay, so now let's talk about how we fix that. Um, so we fix gut dysbiosis with what we call the five R's, which are remove, replace, repair, re-inoculate, reintroduce. Um, and this goes back to what Sandy was saying. This is like a short-term thing. We're gonna put your arm in a cast and then we're gonna go back to normal. So remove, we take out all the things that could possibly be harming your gut. We take out everything that's causing inflammation everything that's causing that immune response, um, everything that's causing issues, we replace. So we put into your body um, 
enzymes to help your body digest things in the place where the enzymes have been decreased or damaged, or those enzyme producers aren't working right. Um, we replace with good bacteria, with good yeast, with good things that are going to help your body digest that food. And then we repair. I think sometimes people will say, well, I probably don't have gut health because I eat really well and I eat really clean. Maybe like there are 20% of people who don't have gut issues. Um, but if we just remove and then we reintroduce, it's sort of like I broke my arm. And so then I just stood here for six weeks and then I went back and started using it again. And oh, wait, it still hurts. Um, these pieces are super important. So replace and then repair. So we want to repair that gut lining. We want those tight gap junctions to come back together. We want that inflammation and that kind of raggedy cell look to go away. Same thing as having a cut on your arm. It's exactly the same. Like if you cut your arm, what do you do? You cover it with a Band-Aid and it heals itself. So we do the exact same thing with your gut. <clears throat> um, we use a handful of supplements. L-glutamine is one of them to improve that mucosal lining. So to thicken that mucus here so that we have a barrier so that all of this stuff stays in and all of this stuff stays out and your body's going to heal itself because that's what it was designed to do. And then we're going to re-inoculate. So re-inoculate means we're going to rebalance the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. If we had to use an antibiotic to get some of the bad bacteria out, we're going to put the good bacteria back in. Um, we talk about bacteria a lot, but your microbiome, what makes you up is bacteria, viruses, which sounds gross, but there's good ones. Um, bacteria, viruses, yeasts, funguses. That's what lives in here. So a lot of times, <clears throat> excuse me, people will go, oh, well, I took a probiotic. Okay, great. Probiotics are a whole mix of stuff. Um, one, if you're going to take a probiotic, you want to take one that's in a capsule that's going to get through your stomach acid. If you take a probiotic that's in a capsule that will dissolve in your stomach acid, you just kill all the bacteria in your stomach acid and it's completely worthless. Um, if you take a probiotic that only has bacteria, bacteria is really slippery and it likes to get out. Um, and so you'll spend $60 on a probiotic and it will go all through you and right out. We need that yeast and that fungus to help hold it in. So when you're doing a re-inoculate, you need the right combination for your body and the right combination to hold that bacteria in it. And then we reintroduce. So then all the things that we took out, we start adding them back in nice and slow and we see how your body responds. And if your body responds well, then you're good. If your body doesn't respond well, then we back it up a little bit and we say, okay, which part of this isn't healed? Like maybe we took the bandaid off a little too early and we still have something to be healed. Um, but this is anywhere from a 30 to a 90 day process. I haven't had it last longer than that. Um, and then for the most part, then if you go back to, for the most part, eating well, eating clean, having a burger and fries once in a while, you should stay in this place and you should be fine. Um, just like if you break your arm and you heal it, as long as you don't go do the same thing that broke your arm again, you're going to be fine. Um, any questions on that? Yes. Great question. So Sandy said, if you reintroduce and you have a reaction to something, is that an indication that you have a food allergy or a sensitivity? Yes. Um, so that can be an indication of either one or two things. One, it can be an indication that that food isn't good for you. And so we just want to keep that out forever. The other thing that that can be an indication of a lot of times, so there's food allergies and then there's food sensitivities. A lot of times a food sensitivity is a result of this you have a food sensitivity because your body has learned to recognize apples because um, you're eating apples all the time and it's leaking out. So your body sees an apple and your immune system freaks out. Oftentimes that will also be an indication that maybe we don't have something quite fully healed yet because that apple isn't staying in here and your immune system can still get to it. Um, so it kind of depends on the severity of the, re the reaction and what it is, but it's either an indication that like we need to go back and we need to finish healing something, or that truly is something that's not good for you. Yeah. And then we just keep it out. Great question. Cool. Okay. So what can you do on a daily basis? So this is sort of, you know, hardcore, we're going to fix stuff and then we're going to go, what can you do on a daily basis to keep your gut healthy? Probiotics. Everybody knows about probiotics. Very common term. Um, adding whole food probiotics to your diet is a great way to keep that microbiome in your gut healthy and balanced. Um, so what are probiotics? They're the good bacteria that live in your gut. Um, fermented foods, kefir, yogurt, fantastic. Probiotic supplements when purchased have to be high quality. 
Um, probiotics are bacteria beneficial yeasts. I feel like I said this all, this might just be my notes. Um, they can help with leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, but diarrhea. Here's a list of fermented foods. So, oh, I will get to it. It is my absolute favorite thing. And I've gotten Tyler hooked on it. Tyler will come over and be like, do you have a keeper in your fridge? <laughs> and then he'll buy me a bottle of kefir, but he's really buying himself a bottle of kefir. I will get to kefir. It's fantastic. Um, anything fermented. So fermented grains, kimchi, kombucha, um, miso, as long as it's organic and not genetically modified. Sourdough bread is a genius invention. Sourdough bread has the bacteria in it. Yes. Oh, and that's the best stuff. He just pulled a, um, Griff just pulled a jar of kimchi out of the fridge. You're my people. Um, <laughs> yeah, sour cream, yogurt, uh, pickles are fantastic. Sauerkraut, all of those things. Um, so those are prebiotic foods. Yeah. Sourdough bread is, can be really good for you. <laughs> then don't eat it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. It's, yeah, high quality sourdough bread. So um, like Nightingale Bakery in the Springs does really high quality sourdough bread. Um, you know, smaller bakers where they're using ancient grains, there's a spelt sourdough bread that you can get in the frozen section of most grocery stores. Spelt's cool because it hasn't been crossbred and genetically modified, which is why it's in the frozen section because that's how it lasts as they freeze it instead of putting it on the shelf and it molds. Um, so it hasn't been messed with. But what sourdough does is the bacteria that are in the sourdough, the yeast and the bacteria that are in that starter do two things. One, they help break down that gluten protein to start with. So they start that digestion process for you. And they, um, they break down all of the, the molecules that make up a wheat germ so that it's actually more digestible. So wheat is really good for vitamin B, super good for niacin, potassium. Like it's a good food that was designed for our bodies and we've just super jacked it up. Um, but sourdough bread is a, a really good option. So a lot of times people who have a gluten allergy but aren't celiac, celiac is a whole different thing, but if they have an allergy, they can often eat sourdough bread pretty fine and not have a reaction. Yeah. So adding one probiotic food to your daily routine is great. And then this is my favorite, which people don't hear about a lot, which is prebiotic food. So we have all the bacteria and the yeast that we need, as long as it's rightly balanced, we actually don't really need any more. Like you do not need to be on a daily probiotic. You should not be on a daily probiotic. What you wanna be doing is you wanna be feeding the stuff that's already in there. So the 700 trillion bacteria cells, we wanna feed those guys like little pets. So prebiotic food is fiber that your little bacteria and yeasts and things ferment and break down and make their own food. They also make really great things for us like vitamin B12. They poop that out and then we absorb it. Brilliant thing. Um, so what is prebiotics? It's the type of fiber that can survive the acidity in your stomach that doesn't get broken down in your digestive tract and that your bacteria in your colon, colonocytes, um, is able to ferment and digest and turn into food for itself. Um, the good bacteria in your colon ferments prebiotic food and produces food um, your own human cells use for energy. So there's, um, you might have heard of essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Non-essential amino acids we cannot create, right? We, wait, non-essential we can create, essential we cannot create. Our bacteria to some degree actually create some of those non-essential or essential ones for us, which is pretty cool. So we need those little guys and we want to feed them. This is one of the coolest things I think societies that consume high amounts of prebiotic fiber. So some cultures in Africa, some cultures in kind of like the mountains, Himalayas of Asia that have a lot of this prebiotic fiber have zero instances of colon polyps and colon cancer. Like it doesn't exist. Um, we don't feed our colonocytes. So we get colon polyps and colon cancer. Okay. So what are prebiotic foods? All of this stuff. Um, the ones that are highlighted in pink, which is a little hard to see are the absolute best. But um, I wish agave wasn't on there. I need to take that off. This is a lot dated. Apples with the skin, asparagus, artichokes, green bananas. When bananas turn yellow and brown, they're turning all of that prebiotic fiber into sugar. So eat them when they're a little green, not the super green ones, those are gross, but kind of like the in-between ones. Um, black beans, cherries, chickpeas. My current favorite breakfast is bone broth protein, frozen cherries, oats, super delicious a big scoop of almond butter and coconut milk. 
brilliant breakfast. Um, chicory root, dandelion greens, eggplant, flax seeds, garlic, honey, artichokes, jicama. This is one of the absolute best. Jicama is so good. Do you guys know what jicama is? It is so good. It is the most unassuming vegetable. Like I didn't know what jicama was for a while. And then I finally found it in my grocery store and it's been there all along, but it's just this brown round. Yeah. It's like a big oval potato. It is super unassuming and you peel off the skin. And it's this like sweet white kind of carroty. Oh, delicious. Put some lime juice on that with a little bit of chili powder. Brilliant snack. Yeah. So, so good. Um, not anything. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> They're the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, yep, totally. Same thing. Um, kiwis, uh, cauliflower leek soup. We're sort of like out of that season now because it's getting warm, but cauliflower leek soup is a delicious meal. Um, lentils, mangoes, pumpkin. That's something when we did our vegan challenge, I ate more lentils than I maybe ever have cumulatively in my life, but they're really good and we felt awesome. Um, quinoa, pumpkin, artichoke. So one thing you can do is add one probiotic food to your day, two or three prebiotic foods to your day, and you're going to dramatically improve your gut health, right? Two degree shift. Yeah. Great question. Um, the best option for the prebiotic is, um, whole rolled oats. So like old fashioned rolled oats. Steel cut oats are great. They have, because they have that casing around them, they're a little bit higher in um, insoluble fiber. So fabulous to like clean out your insides, a little bit less accessible for your bacteria. So both are good. Like eat that to sweep stuff out, then eat rolled oats. Um, instant oats are just more processed. So they have less nutrients, more sugar, more option for contamination. But if it's an option between, you know, a donut or instant oatmeal, like let's go instant oatmeal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super good. Yeah. For those of you online, he said when he was running a marathon, yeah, he would put the regular oats and the steel cut oats together. Super good. I love to get, when I'm like in a rush or for camping trips, I'll get the instant oatmeal, but I'll get the kind that has no flavor, no sugar, no nothing. <clears throat> and then I'll put a little bit of coconut oil in for healthy fat. I'll add cinnamon and salt. Delicious. Doesn't need any sugar. Yeah, I know. Sounds weird. Salt makes the sweet pop. We could, we could spend like a whole nother hour talking about sugar. Um, do you, but I'll give you like the 30 second version. Do you guys ever remember in high school, you did the experiment of diffusion where you'd put a grape in a salt water and see what happens. Anybody nerdy enough to remember that? Just me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so if you take a grape, you can do it tonight. And if you want, put it in regular water, nothing happens. Put it in salt water. It shrivels up. Why? Because it has to get all the sugar out of it to dilute the salt water outside of it. That's actually what's happening. So why they say salt isn't good for people who have heart conditions. The same thing is happening in our body. Our body is diluting itself, to, or diluting our bloodstream. So shrinking our arteries to try to dilute the rest of our body. Um, and that actually happens because of sugar, not salt. So it's sugar that pulls all of that out. So if you eat the same amount of salt and decrease your sugar, all of those issues go away. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So get rid of the sugar, eat the same amount of salt, go back to your doctor. You'll be totally fine. That could be a whole nother talk, but, um, okay. So probiotic and prebiotic foods, <laughs> great way to, to do your everyday kefir. I got you, Griff. Okay. So kefir sounds super gross. It's actually really delicious. So kefir is fermented milk. Sounds disgusting. I know. I know when I first heard what kefir was, I was like, uh-uh. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's a, it's like a very cultural thing. Russians have a version. Koreans have a version. Chinese people have a version. Italians have a version. I feel I think Americans might be the only one that don't have a version. Like ancient wisdom, all of these cultures who live in ancient wisdom, like Greeks have a version. Jewish people have a version. 
any ancient culture knows that this is like the best thing you can put in your body. And then somehow in America, we're like smartphones, I'm fine. Um, yeah, so kefir is fermented milk, sounds super gross. Tyler can attest it's actually really good. It tastes just like yogurt. Yeah, it's super good. Yeah, I put it in smoothies. I put it on um, like homemade granola. It tastes just like yogurt, it's awesome. But here's sort of your, your differences. So yogurt, um, I think this one is the coolest. Your absolute best yogurt is gonna have five strains or less of bacteria only. Kefir has over 40 strains of bacteria, yeast, and fungus. Sounds super gross, but that's really, really good for your gut. Um, this has been, that's the wrong, those should be switched. Um, kefir has been around way longer. Um, this is made at heat. So that means it actually kills off a number of the bacteria that's in here. Kefir is made at room temperature, which means all of that bacteria is growing and flourishing. I know it sounds so gross, but it's really good. And it's really good for you. Um, uh, kefir is also prebiotic and probi probiotic. So it has some of both pieces in there. So it's putting bacteria in and then feeding them, which makes sense. Like you leave it on your counter, whatever's in the milk is feeding them. So it's doing both. So that's the difference between yogurt and kefir. So one of my tips for gut health is like, just throw your yogurt out and get kefir and you have dramatically improved your gut health. So that's what kefir is. Normal grocery stores. Yep. My, mm -hmm. yep, it's right next to the yogurt. Yep, the plain one's the best because it doesn't have any sugar in it. Um, and then you can add like kefir with a little bit of raw un unfiltered honey is so good like put a little kefir in mix the honey in oh it's like dessert i go get it on the way home um it's so good yep kefir is better than yogurt significantly better than yogurt it has almost no lactose if any and then if you get goat milk kefir instead of cow milk kefir you should be completely fine i have people who are totally lactose intolerant and can do goat milk kefir and feel great. Yeah, so goat milk kefir is the best. Um, goat milk compared to, so here's my little pitch for goats, little guys. Um, cows are meant to build cows. Like none of us wanna be the size of cows. So why are we drinking something designed to create a cow? Um, that's, that's like, that's Halley science. That's not super grounded in science. That's just like, if that's meant to make it like human milk is meant to make a human that makes sense cow's milk meant to make a cow something's off um and goat milk specifically actually is molecularly more similar to human milk so it has something called cow protectin in it which helps like is really good for your gut um it has some other gut healing properties in it whereas cow's milk doesn't so with cow's milk kefir you're just getting the bacteria with goat milk kefir you're also getting calprotectin and some other enzymes that are really good for you so um there's a uh, red barn is that is that what it is red barn what's in my fridge red barn something there's a goat on the bottle it's white there's a goat on the bottle red redwood farms kefir i think is great natural grocers has it sprouts has it i found it at king supers king supers has um or kroger whatever has cow's milk kefir more often but any health food store will absolutely have it. And most normal grocery stores have it. We just don't ever notice it because it's not on our grid. So sort of like jicama, we're like, what's that thing? I don't know. Jicama and kefir, they're in your grocery stores. <laughs> we just haven't noticed them. Yeah, good question. Um, so um, here's my last one for daily gut health. Resistant starch, super cool stuff. Starch gets such a bad rap. It's actually super good for your gut. Um, most carbohydrates have starches in it, grains, potatoes, legumes, resistant starches are able to travel through your stomach and your small intestine unharmed. They get into your large intestine and they're one of your favorite bacteria's favorite things to eat. They love it. Studies have shown that resistant starches actually help with weight loss, benefit heart health and improve blood sugar control, insulin sensitivity and digestive health. So oats are one of the main sources or the easiest sources of resistant starch. And we know, you know, everybody knows like, oh yeah, eat oatmeal for your heart health. Well, here's why. <laughs> here's your fact. Um, I have a client who was like terrified to eat anything with carbs because she thought she would gain weight. And so I just made her do like a two week challenge. I was like, just give me two weeks. Like if I mess you up, we can, we can get back there. Just give me two weeks of eating like oatmeal and some potatoes. And she lost six pounds. 
um, eating resistant starch because her body's like, oh, thank you. Um, another cool story that I love telling with clients, I'm probably way over time. Am I good? Can I keep going? Fantastic. Um, we're close to done, but I think this is a cool story. Going back to, you know, your microbiome is as unique as your fingerprint. Keto might be good for your sister, but not good for you. I had a client who came to me after trying everything. She tried keto, she tried paleo, she tried whole 30, she tried all of the things, all which are pretty low carbohydrates um, and couldn't lose weight to save her life. Like didn't lose a single pound, sometimes gained. We did what's called a food mood poop journal with her. So we track someone's food, mood and poop for a week. Um, and we use that to help us understand what their body is processing and how their body is processing food. And on days that she had a higher carbohydrate ratio, she had more energy, she was more satiated and she felt better kind of an anomaly. That's not super normal. Usually people have feel better with fat and protein, but she felt better with carbs. So I said, your body is telling us that your body likes carbs. So how about we just increase your carb ratio a little bit? And she started losing weight like that. Um, so it's, it's what is right for your body, not what Google tells you. I think that's important. Um, okay. So resistant starches, 15 to 30 grams of resistant starch a day. How do we do that? Here's how we do that. Eat oatmeal in the morning brown rice or black rice or wild rice, legumes, green bananas, raw potato starch. This is a super awesome one to throw in your smoothies. I know it sounds so weird. Take a tablespoon of raw potato starch, throw it in your smoothie. It'll make it delicious and creamy. You'll feel more satiated. It has a super low glycemic index. Um, and it's cold because resistant starch has to be cold. So potato salad is actually better than a baked potato. Interestingly enough, in terms of resistant starch, it has to be baked and then cooled in order for that to form. So throwing that in your smoothie, brilliant way to get that in there. Um, potatoes cooked and cooled. So you're welcome for the summer. Eat your potato salad. Um, high maize corn flour. So go get good, high quality corn tortillas. There's your resistant starch. So um, last little piece that I think is really important um, in terms of gut function and just general function is those nutrients that we're not getting from our food. So 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, selenium, and zinc. That trio combo, if we're deficient, the common cold can kill us, which is pretty wild. So when we talk about immune function and we don't have these guys, we're, we're having an issue. All three of those are absorbed in our large intestine. So if we don't have good gut health, even if we're getting enough of that, in our diet, we're not absorbing it. Um, so that's something that you can test and see where you're at. Um, mole Ooh, that could also be a whole nother hour talk. Um, mag <laughs> magnesium is in charge of 300. I, uh, yeah, I'm down. Let's do it. Somebody just write down what I say. Like, oh yeah, I could do a talk on that. Okay, I'll talk on that. So magnesium is in charge of 300 plus functions in your body. Um, I feel like magnesium could be the new super drug. I can fix anything with magnesium. I can fix restless legs. I can fix migraines. I can fix headaches. I can fix stomach aches, helps with poop. I can fix constipation. Yes. Um, magnesium does all of those things. Yep. Totally. Um, zinc and selenium are really important for cell structure. So um, if you picture a cell, same thing, go back to high school biology, the cell structure is what holds the cell up and gives it form. If that cell doesn't have structure, now we start getting, you know, gaps in our gut. We start getting saggy skin, all of that stuff. Zinc and selenium are super important for that. Um, and if you want to go look, I think this is a cool fact. Zinc and selenium are actually in most batteries. Like your AAA batteries have zinc and selenium because they're super crucial for energy conduction, which they're also super crucial for our mitochondria, which are our batteries in our body. So yeah, yep. Zinc, copper, and selenium. Um, Copper is also really important. If you increase your zinc, you have to increase your copper. If you increase zinc without increasing copper, you're just gonna give yourself stomach aches. Nothing's gonna happen. Um, super important. So zinc, millennium, and copper, make sure that you have those in your diet. This one I think is huge. We used to think that people who are deficient in B12 were only vegans and vegetarians because we thought you got B12 from meat. We've actually since learned that B12 comes from the bacteria that lives in the soil. So why meat has it is because cows and chickens and pigs are eating stuff off the ground and eating that bacteria and then just passing it on to us. Um, and because of industrial farming and um, industrial 
fertilizers and all of these things that aren't conducive to healthy soil and healthy bacteria. Now, five out of seven people are deficient in B12. So if you have brain fog or fatigue or chronic depression, you're very likely deficient in B12 because you're not getting it from your food. Um, almost all of us are deficient in D3K2. Every single person in this room is deficient in that because we live, unless you're taking it, because we live above the 38th parallel. So above the 38th parallel, we are guaranteed to be deficient from um, October to May, because even if you're outside all day long, you cannot get enough sunshine to convert. Um, and then D3K2 is a super important combination, especially with COVID. Doctors have been yelling from the rooftop, take D3, which is true, except that um, K2 is what directs the D3 and the calcium to your bones. If you don't have K2, that calcium gets absorbed wherever it is into your bloodstream, which is into your arteries. So we end up with atherosclerosis or the thing that gives you heart attacks. So that's just a super easy one. Just take those two together. Um, but D3K2 is a super solid one. In the summer, if you're outside a ton, you probably don't need that from May to October. But in the winter, we're all deficient. So we all need that one. What is the K2? The K2 is the vitamin and mineral that directs the D3 and calcium to your bones. Just get a D3 K2. Yeah, um, K1 is found in like leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables. K2 is typically only found in meat. Um, and we usually can't get enough meat to get enough K2 to balance out the amount of D3 that we need. So I am not a supplement person. Like I don't think you should have a cabinet full of supplements ever. I have like four things, but these are the four things that like we're just, we can't get it from our food no matter what we do. Um, and most multivitamins, like if you look at this, zinc, selenium, magnesium, copper, it'll only be like 10, 20% of your daily value, what you actually need. Um, and magnesium, the daily value was created in, I think, 1982. And so it's just super out of date. So you actually need way more magnesium than the daily value tells you. Um, and what's great about magnesium is you really can't overdose. Like if you overdose on magnesium, you're just going to get some loose stools. So um, they're just, these are all, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, totally. And it, um, it kills viruses. Viruses can't live in an environment where there's zinc. Yep, totally. Also true. And if you take it on an empty stomach, it can make you feel real sick. Don't do that. Um, but you can get methylated zinc, which is just zinc that's half digested already, and your body will absorb it better, and then you won't get a stomachache. So yes, all of those are true. And for those of you online, um, Sandy just said she had a bodybuilder who had bad bloating and constipation, and so took enough magnesium to fix that. Um, cool. Okay, so those those are the things that we really all need, and then omegas. Tat, shuck that. You want to get one that's D3K2. Yep. Um, and I actually have a guide. So I have a little square thing at the end um, and one I'll send you a gut recipe book if you fill that in and I'll also send you a guide to high quality supplements so that you know like what to go look at when you're looking at a bottle in the store and I can walk you through that at the end too. Um, okay, so what do you do? So how do you not be the Dead Sea? Um, before I put my ideas up, I would love to hear from you guys. What are you taking away? What do you wanna implement in your life as a result of this? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll help you a ton. Totally. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Then we probably want to do a gut healing protocol. <laughs> Yeah. You, yeah, excellent. We can make that happen. Yeah, if you're over 25, let's just fix that. Let's put your gut in a cast for a little bit and let it heal and then you'll be good or way better at least. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the other group not even saying it's the end of the world or whatever. But you can already buy your own brand and then everything you read that there's no way in the same thing there is something else. You pay, you know, they're expensive, they're expensive, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, that's why I, I hate, you know, I want to, but then I don't want to. Yeah, I totally track with you. I'll pull this up and just show you real quick. Um, this is, oh, okay. Oh, oh, this is exciting. Okay, hold on. Um, yes, you are 100% accurate. That is a really, oh, it's the other way. That's confusing. Okay, I got this. Um, that is a really frustrating piece of the supplement industry. Super unregulated. Um, what they say is in it oftentimes isn't in it. There's a brand um, that's supposed to be super high quality. Uh, here you go. And three years ago had, it's like sold at Whole Foods, $40 a bottle, um, had everything recalled three years ago. Their St. John wort because um, what they said was in it wasn't in it. It was like all cellulose. So it was like a capsule of sawdust that they're selling for $40. Um, so I'll put the, the QR code up so that you can get this and download this. But we created this at Live Nourish to help with questions exactly like that. Like if I'm going to spend money on supplements, how do I know what to buy? Um, And so I'll just scroll down to these pages. So these are the certifications that I look for on a bottle of supplement. If you go home and you look in your supplement cabinet and it doesn't have at least one of these, I literally would say, just throw it away. Like best case scenario, it's not doing anything for you. Worst case scenario, it's a synthetic. And so your body's recognizing it as a virus. So it's actually causing harm. Like get over the, I spent whatever on it. If it doesn't have one of these, put it in the trash. It's totally worthless. Um, The NSF is my favorite because the NSF does a two part certification. So it certifies, it's a third party. So supplement brands pay for this. um, And it certifies that what the supplement brand says is in it is in it at the ratios that they say is in it. And then it's also 100% free of the top five contaminants. So mold, bacteria, radiation, people don't think about that. People use radiation all the time now to kill bacteria, but it also kills everything else that you need, Um, heavy metals and herbicides, pesticides. So if you see that on a supplement, really high quality supplement, Um, poor Tyler, I got COVID and I sent him to the store to get me zinc, I think, zinc and copper. Yeah, like two supplements took him like an hour and a half because he was reading all the bottles. <laughs> it really is. He was committed. I was like, I love you. Thank you. Um, there's also a supplement brand that's a medical grade supplement brand that we use at Live Nourish Coaching that has all of these. <laughs> like they paid for every single one and then some. So you can do that. But then this, I think, is really fascinating. Um, let's see if I can just zoom this one in. Yeah. So yeah, perfect. Um, so this, I think is really, really interesting. These are, some of these are, you know, brands that we recognize that whole foods or natural grocers that are really high quality garden of life made by Nestle Vito. Um, this brand for new life, they make a lot of like gut health microbiome supplements. They're owned by Clorox. So they're, yeah like conflict of interest, maybe like the company that's killing bacteria owns the company that's supposed to fix your gut bacteria. Like, uh. um, so I, I think this is fascinating. The parent companies of a lot of these supplement brands. Um, yeah. So herbal life metagenics are owned by Amway, like, uh, uh-uh, veto, um, um, Centrum, which we know is a joke, um, emergency and calculate Caltrate. Yeah. Mega foods, that's another one that's sold at, um, yeah, Nature Made, just, you know, yeah, literally throw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's a really good question. There, there absolutely are um, really good, high quality. And if you go down, I, I give you a couple brands that, um, like places to go look, where to buy them, Zymogen, where not to buy them. Um, so there absolutely are really good, high quality and pretty affordable. Like Zymogen is super affordable. I've compared it to natural grocers and it's really comparable um, who absolutely are ethical and do the right thing um, and are high quality. And I would say it's definitely the minority 
like most of the supplement brands are total jokes, which ugh, the New York Times published an article, I think two years ago, um, saying that uh, multivitamins don't work. We were like, ugh, they studied Centrum, which were like, no kidding, Centrum doesn't work. Thank you for telling us. But then they, you know, painted all supplements with the same brush, which it's not. So yeah, cool. Any other takeaways before I give you my ideas? Okay, so here's my ideas. So what you can do, go home and drink eight ounces of kefir a day. <laughs> One change, little two degree shift over time will make a dramatic difference. Um, intentionally add, mm -hmm. yep, yeah, big like yogurt sized milkish bottle. Yeah, totally. Um, intentionally add one probiotic and three prebiotic foods to your meals daily. Like throw in some kefir, some quinoa, and some sauerkraut. Easy, improving your gut health. Um, add in a few target supplements to cover your bases. Um, if you have underlying gut issues, go find the fire and put it out rather than just temporary turtling off the alarm. I think I said that at dinner, maybe not in the talk, but this is, this is the definition of functional medicine. You know, we say all of those symptoms, so the nasal drip or the eczema or the, those are all fire alarms. And so what we do is we go turn the fire alarm off, but there's still a fire going. <laughs> so if we still have the problem, we've just temporarily fixed it. So go turn the fire off, AKA heal your gut. Um, work with a coach to help you make changes that are sustainable. What are you gonna do? take that away. Um, and then here, I think this is super important. And especially for Sandy's challenge, find your why, like, why are you going to take a month to three months to heal your gut? Um, your why is important. So this is my why I love being outside. I love whitewater rafting and mountain biking. And if my body isn't well, I cannot do the things I love. And so why do I eat? Well, why do I intentionally nourish my gut? Why do I exercise on a daily basis? because I want to be here. Um, another one that's huge for me. So I have the BRCA gene, the gene that codes for breast cancer. Bummer. Um, thank you. Genetic code. Um, if you remember way back to the slide, genes are this much. So I can't control whether or not that gene activates, but what I can eat, how I treat my body it can dramatically down level the chances that that activates. So I'm not in control, but I have a lot of say about whether or not I end up with breast cancer or not. I have the gene, doesn't mean I'm gonna get it. Um, I really wanna be around for my kids and my grandkids. Like, I think that would be cool. Um, and if I'm not well, I'm either not gonna be around or I'm gonna be around in such a sad state that I can't engage. So those are my whys. Oh, and then this one's huge too. Um, I love my mom, she's wonderful. Um, she knows this, my mom grew up, my mom is stunning. Like if you saw my mom, she's one of the most beautiful humans on the planet. And I grew up with her, thinking she was ugly her whole life, which made me think I was ugly my whole life. And I refuse to have that be my daughter's story. So I don't want to stay healthy to like stay skinny and fit in a jean size. I want my daughter to know what it means to live nourished and have that be her guideline instead of that. Um, so that's why I live the way I live. That's why I choose the way I choose. And I think this is the most important piece of this talk because if, if you don't have this in place, why would you eat well and work out? Like if you don't care and it doesn't matter, go eat pizza and burgers and feel like shit. Like that's fine. But for me, this is so important that I choose, I choose to nourish myself on a daily basis. Um, okay, so how do we do? Hopefully you have a deeper understanding of how your gut functions and relates to your overall function. Um, you have an understanding of functional nutrition and the importance of food beyond just building muscle or learning losing weight. And hopefully you're going home with your next action step for your own well-being. And to help you with that, oh, here's all my sources, by the way, if you're nerdy like me and you want to go read the NCBI articles, please feel free. Um, yeah, that's why you hired me. I did all the work. Um, but I'll just send this to Sandy so she can put it up if you like really want to go dig into PubMed. Um, so you guys, if you want to scan this QR code with your phone and I'll also send this to Sandy, um, I'll send you the gut fix guide. So that's um, 30 days of recipes to help fix your gut. That's really just like the top layer of the remove. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we need to do, but if you're in a good place, just add a healing recipe. And then I'll also send you that supplement guide as well. Um, also, if you book, if you do that, you can go to our website and book a free consult. If you're like, um, help, we can help you. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, great question. 
all of the, we have the whole spectrum. So we really believe that um, feeling well shouldn't be gauged by your budget. So we have a package sort of for like every level of illness, you know, the more complex you are, the longer it's going to take to heal. We're probably going to be on the higher end. Um, if you're just someone who is like, I would really just love help cutting through the crap on Google, like help me understand. We have a membership that's 25 bucks a month. So we have a six month package, a three month package, um, a reboot, which is just like, tell us our whole health history. We'll give you a plan, go implement for our like real go-getters who don't feel like they need help, but need a guide. Um, and then we have a couple of DIY programs and a membership. So everything from six months to stand of time. Yes, absolutely. I can even show you them. Um, so super blessed. So this was, I was a solopreneur for a really long time. Um, solopreneur, yeah. Just me, myself, and I. Um, and then, um, and then this is just such a powerful message and it means so much that this blew up and I very rapidly could not handle <laughs> Um, all of the people. So um, I now have a team of coaches. Every single one of us is functional medicine certified. So through the Institute of Functional Medicine, we're all board certified. I have one coach who's not board certified, but she's incredible and sitting for boards at the end of May. So that's fine. Um, so we're all amazing. Um, here's like our summary of certifications. All of us have the NC and national board certification health and wellness coach. Um, and then this is my team. So Claudia, Shayla, and Tony, they're my coaches. They are incredible. Um, they all have like the same certifications, the same brain, the same take on stuff, and we're all different, which is super cool. So um, Tony is our new client advocate. That's typically who you'll talk to when you book a consult. And she's really great at kind of like understanding who you are and matching your personality to the coach that will be best for you, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's my team. You're welcome to go to our website and read who they are and what they do and what their certifications are. And then this is my support team. Who's amazing. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I can take zero credit for that. And you'll see Marina all over. I take Marina places and people be like, Oh, I've seen your face. <laughs> She's like, yeah, cool. Um, these are incredible. So, um, client success. This is a person who will like get you set up with your contracts and your intake form and get our coach set up so that they have all of your information for your intake. Um, and then Marina does everything on the back end. So, our website, our social media, everything. And both of these, I know she's amazing, like amazing. And occasionally she'll text me like, I need you to film a reel. Okay, I can do that. Um, but something that I think is super cool and she wouldn't mind me that sharing this, we're, we're very conscious about HIPAA compliance. Like I do not share people's names. Marina doesn't care. Um, Marina came to us as an employee um, and we give all of our employees a coaching package too, because we just think that's important. Like if you work for us, we practice what we preach. So let's do this. Um, but Marina came with a crazy autoimmune thing. She's allergic to her own hormones. Very weird, very rare autoimmune, but she'll have her menstrual cycle and break out in anaphylactic hives that like shut down her throat. Super weird. Um, and then she's, she just has a whole mess of stuff. Um, and so we've started doing nutrition to like balance her gut and heal her. And she had a really hard pregnancy and was on bed rest. And, um, a couple of days ago, she was like, I wish I had found you like three years ago. Like my life would be so much better. Um, and so she's healing. So it's really fun to have her on our team and supporting all our clients and she's living this too. And then, um, Anna's walking a similar journey. She's not allergic to her hormones, but she's got some other stuff going on. So she's in our full coaching package as well. Um, and then Terry is our project manager. So we bring her in for things like building out our membership and stuff. So yeah, that's my team. And I'm super blessed to have them. And it's really fun. All three of these women, I think are better coaches than I am, which is awesome. Like I have zero issues sending people to other people because like I would choose Claudia for my own coach instead of me, which is pretty cool. So yeah, sometimes I'll get like, oh, but I want to work with you because I saw you and I'm like, I know you'll actually like her better. <laughs> I'm cool, but they're better. So yeah, good question. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Anything else that I can give you guys, people online, questions, thoughts, concerns? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's super sad. So I have dealt with my own, you know, pretty severe gut health issues. I'm totally off camera now. Sorry. We'll get over here. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah. So I dealt with my own like super serious gut health issues. And that that's partly what led me into functional medicine um, was I was told by a lot of doctors, all your tests are normal and you just have IBS. Like, yeah, good luck. And then I worked for a GI doctor who was crazy and I learned a ton from her. And I asked her, you know, like, what is IBS? When we diagnose something with someone with IBS, what is that? She's like, that's what we diagnose people with when we don't know what's wrong with them when we can't fix them. And I was like, huh. <laughs> um, and the truth is, like IBS really is very treatable, um, even to the you know nth degree when it manifests as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, those kind of things, very treatable. Um, and you know, Western medicine is beautiful and important, and we need it, and it has its place, and it's just not set up to. It's not set up to heal. It's set up to treat and fix. It's not set up to heal. Um, so. Yep, absolutely. And working together with other components of getting someone help. Like, I love injury prevention and injury recovery and, and weight loss and nutrition to a degree. But yep. there's a certain realm that I'm going to say, you need to talk to Holly, or you need to go see Benji. Mm -hmm. Or Shelly's going to be holding like his knee. Yep. And so that's where it comes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well said, totally. Typically. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you're a hot mess. Um, I have not yet had a client go past 120 days. Um, yeah, challenge accepted. <laughs> Let's do this thing. Um, yeah, totally. <laughs> Yep. I've never had a client go past that because truly like a hundred and if you think about, so, okay, so that was three sentence starters. Um, if you think about your cells in your body, it takes four months for every cell in your body to die and be made new. So that's the regenerative process. Like that's how long at the absolute longest that it takes someone to heal. Cause that's how long it's going to take every single cell to die and be regenerated. Um, so when we're making changes with nutrition and lifestyle, it's not an overnight fix because we're waiting on cells to regenerate. Um, but also, you know, like our gut epithelial lining regenerates cells significantly faster than that because it's only one cell thick and our body knows that. So it's like, you know, if I have a skin cell that's out of whack, we can wait on that. If I have a gut cell that's out of whack, that is my one and only. Like I gotta get that thing fixed. Um, so sort of like gut health and mouth health, both of those heal pretty quickly. Um, just because our body prioritizes them, which is awesome. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of other pieces that go into that. So when we're working with someone, so we do a full 60 minute intake. So birth till now, tell me your whole health history. And that includes, you know, like childhood trauma and, um, like things that people have said to you that have been mean that you've internalized, um, the book, the body keeps the score, you know, that at all brilliant book. I love that book. It's totally science-based research on how things that have happened to us in our life, things that people have said get stored in different pieces of our body. So a lot of times when we're working on a gut health program, like we'll refer someone out and say, Hey, I want you to go to counseling and go work on a couple of these things. Cause our minds and our bodies are so connected. So we're dealing with this and I'm gonna have you go deal with this at the same time. And, and we're going to work, we're going to work this together. I have a client who has like severe obsessive compulsive disorder, 
like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, and so we have done a ton of like gut healing and nutrition protocols and all of these things. And we've gotten her from here to here and getting her to here gave her the ability to say, okay, I think I need to go to treatment for OCD. Like she was not willing at all to do that here. Here, it gave her enough bandwidth to say, okay, I think this is the next thing. So she started doing some neurofeedback and some um, OCD, obsessive compulsive. And then that gave her this much more bandwidth that the last time I was talking to her, she said, you know, all of this stuff that I've done, all of a sudden it's clicking. Like it feels easy and it's now making sense because we had that baseline. Um, so that's kind of a long answer to how long it takes. But just like Sandy said, you know, we'll refer out, we'll get you the people that we need. Sometimes that means we need to go to chiropractic because your brain is in charge of your gut. And if your brain can't talk to your gut, it can't heal. So if we're hitting a roadblock, it might be, okay, I need you to go get this adjusted so that your nerves can connect and your brain can talk to your gut. And then we can continue this healing process. So, but yeah, I haven't had it take longer than 120 days. Yeah, totally. The other thing I'll tell clients too, I think this is important is, you know, when we're dealing with dysfunction, that has been going on for a long time, think about how long it took us to get here. So like it took us 30 years to get here. We're not going to get to like a hundred percent fixed place in 30 days, but we're going to make significant headway. Um, and then from there, now we have a whole new baseline. And from this baseline, now we can take another step and get a whole nother baseline. But I think that's important too, especially with weight loss. Like what well, took me 30 years to gain this weight and now I expect to lose it in a month. You're like, it doesn't work that way. But um, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why are you doing this? Why does it matter? B12. Yeah. Vitamin D often is in milk. It's typically added after, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you see fortified milk, fortified means they've taken all of the good stuff out of it. And then they've added a bunch of synthetic stuff back. Uh huh. Oat milk. Yeah. That's a great question. With plant milk, plant milks tend to be super high in sugar. So you can get oat milk that has like 25 grams of sugar. I would way rather you just drink regular milk. Um, so yeah, with plant milk, just read the ingredients and get the kind that's original or unsweetened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, almond milk, oat milk, coconut milk. Um, almond milk and, and oat milk, depending on someone's gut health, like sometimes almond milk can make you not feel great. I'll have clients say, and I've experienced this too, sometimes with almond milk, I'll get like little sharp pokes. Weird. I can't explain that, but that's just the thing. Um, my favorite is coconut milk, super good MCTs, multi, um, medium chain fatty acids that are really good for you. Um, yeah. Flax milk is, comes and goes. I've found that at natural grocers too. Sometimes we'll have it and sometimes we won't. I do too. Flax milk is awesome. Hemp milk is also super good and has protein in it, just like normal milk does. Yeah. Um, but I would go, if I had to like rank them in terms of quality, I would go probably like coconut milk, flax milk, hemp milk, um, goat milk. And then I would do like almond milk, oat milk. And then I would do high quality, whole fat, organic cow's milk, and then everything else. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> goat milk, goat milk's an acquired taste. The goat milk kefir, yeah. The goat milk kefir, you just taste like yogurt. Goat milk. Goat milk is an acquired taste. Goat cheese is an acquired taste too. I love goat cheese now. When I first started eating it, I was like, it tastes like a goat. What you would think a goat. No, no. <laughs> I remember the first time I had goat milk, I was like, this tastes like a farm animal. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> uh 
Uh huh. <laughs> Can't get it off. Yeah. Yeah, goat is really good for your body, but it's an acquired taste. Oh, fun. Oh. Oh, heck yes. Oh, that'll be super fun. No, but I want to. Okay, I'm in. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Oh, that is fantastic. Yes. Life is pretty good. How fun. Yeah, totally. Thanks for coming. <laughs> That's nice seeing your ear. I like that. I love Hey, Daniel, we're going to hang up now, but you're welcome to come over and hang out with us. Thanks, Chris. Good presentation. Yeah, I thought it was great. I'm glad I yeah, hung out for this it was one. Good. Yeah, me too. Thanks so much. Right. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Yeah.